I guess. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Share screen. Go back. And uh, okay. Start from. I feel bad that I can't. I won't be able to see. What can't you see? I won't be able to see the participants once. Once you share, not a, yeah, not the stop well, recording. Four of us. What's the difference? That's true. Well, unless somebody sh starts to show up late, okay. Well, yeah, but that they'll that'll pop up at the top of your screen, right? Well, I, I hope so. Okay, yes, I think so. Okay, slideshow from current slide. Okay, all right. Creating and using textures and photographs. This is a petrified wood and crack, two different photos. And this is a picture, was a picture of, uh, I have a petrified wood table. And I had a picture of a crack in the sidewalk, which I think pops up in another photograph. Oh. So I've used it in uh, for texture, for background. Is that the crack from the, this other thing you spoke about? No, this is a crack. I took a photo of a sidewalk with a crack in it. Oh. And I superimposed it. It's two photos together. Oh, very nice. Hmm. So texture photography, how to use it to your advantage. And this is a quote from Michael Miller. A well-lit subject with wonderful textures brings life, dimension, and visual interest to my photographs. I can't see this. Hold on. And the viewer feels the textures. So here um, is a quote by Michael Miller. Now you, you want to think about textures when you're taking photo. Is it the photo that you're taking a picture of that has texture in it? Or is it a photo that needs to be fixed? So what um, Michael says, if you have front light, it flattens and softens the photograph. Side light is better because it creates a deeper shadow and gives you more contrast patterns and greater depth. Death, depth, not death. The the purists may not apply textures in post-processing. Again, they may think, well, I'm gonna get my textures, I'm gonna do everything when I take the photo. But if you have, you don't always have the optimal light, um, you may need to add some texture to it to um, make it more interesting. Uh, it can be a fun and creative way to enhance any type of photo, uh, creating the look of a vintage or worn photo and you could also create change into a black and white, uh, adding texture to create a moody look. So you can use any type of um, photo really to use textures with portraits, landscapes, still life. And I did send out links to a lot of the articles that I got. That they have a lot of interesting things and I'll, I'll, I'll pass through a couple of them um, in the slides. Um, we will cover how and why to create your own texture, free resources of texture images, and how to compose a textured photograph with various programs. And if you want any of my textures, I'm, I'm willing to share. Uh, the textures means the surface quality, and this is a quote from another article that I read, and I have this, this is um, a website that I have um, on the link, one of the links. The texture means the surface quality of the object. In photography, the texture helps to make the image look more meaningful. It makes the photo more vibrant and appealing to the viewer. I don't know if that means somebody's trying to get in. I think it does. Oh. You see it? You know, do you see at the top? No, it didn't show up. Oh. No, it didn't. No, nobody's there. It just could be my computer it gives me a lot of these. Um, uh, these types of things, uh, was here. Okay. Oh, it's in, yeah. Um, oh, I was in the next slide. Okay. Oh no, I wasn't, in, but here we are. Sample of my texture photos. So these are some that I've taken bark, agate. This is a table table that I have in my uh, living room, lichen. Uh, rust, you recognize that uh, flow probably, and Bobby, right? It's from the garage. The, right, yeah. from the, uh, yeah, where well, we went to the boat yard. Yes, indeed. I mean, not the uh, boat yard. No, no, the, the audio graveyard. The yeah, graveyard. We, we, we got it. Go. Yeah, rocks and leaves, that was in my backyard this um, fall, and moss on rocks. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, one of my outings. So, um, 
You know, you well, I, I could think of lots of other materials you would use. Oh, you could use wools, yarns, paper. Anything. I'm going to go through that. Why use textures? Um, here's a rug that I have by, by my front door. Um, and this is a, the rug with, with um, bubble wrap over it. The same foot rug with bubble wrap over it. Um, you can create painterly looks, cover up in perfect condition, uh, up for imperfect conditions, such as a cloudy day, a midday light is poor. You know, you go out and you're taking pictures in the middle of the day, in mean, the overcast day. And I have a picture of a cloudy day that I changed. Um, enhance photos and eliminate distracting backgrounds, which with Bobby, what we were trying to do with um, Diane, remember? Yes, I do. Yes, photo. indeed. Yes. Yeah, and some of the, and the, judge spoke the comments. Of the same thing. Yeah. Right, right, right. And if she had this pro program, it would she could have taken care of it. Um, um, some of the camera settings and putting it together. Here's that crack on the sidewalk that that was in the other photo. Yes. Uh, right. So you take photos and you want to take it raw for post processing. It'll help you get the most of your photo because you're going to be doing a lot of editing. Uh, you want either the manual or uh, mode or aperture priority, setting your f-stop. If you want everything in focus, you want to be f8 for a flat surface. But if you have a curved surface, you want to have a, a higher, like f12, f16, to get more of the image in focus. Uh, if you are going for a blurred effect of your, of your um, texture, you want your lens wide open, right? Um, the smallest f-stop on your lens. So I have lens that go down to f2.8. Now, mind you, when I took all these photos of my textures, I was really not paying attention to that. <laughs> so, you know, that's just, uh, you know, what they say, the rules, right? Uh, make sure you check your um, contrast, checking exposure compensation. You know, you using, you know, the um, most cameras have exposure compensation. You can do minus or plus. So you've set your F spot, stop your, your ISO and your speed, and you still need some more or less light, you can use your uh, exposure compensation. It says to use a shutter speed for a hundred millimeter lens, a focal length, uh, use a hundred uh, hundredth of a second. I really don't know the rationale for it, but that's again, a rule of law. But again, when you're out and seeing a texture, I'm not gonna sit there and say, oh, I'm gonna remember that rule. You're just gonna take the picture. I'm gonna take the picture, yes, right. <laughs> the ISO These to keep the noise. are so confusing that it's almost, just make sure you're in focus and take the picture. Well, you wanna look at your histogram. If you look at your histogram on your, ca on your camera, you can be able to see if there are too many highlights, too many dark areas. If it's too far to the left, it's too dark. If it's too far to the right, it's too right. light, right. right? And you wanna keep your noise level low as possible. On an older camera, right, uh, 100 to 400 ISO. But on the newer cameras like mine, mine goes up to like, I think 32,000 ISO. I mean, if you can get up high ISO, ISO, high ISOs and still have quality images. But if you're not, you still have programs with Lightroom A1 or Photoshop raw filter. You, it's easy to correct the noise. Now, uh, in Photoshop, it's A1 also, and it has an enhanced um, um, uh, noise reduction features. But you could have plugins such as, and, and the judges talk about this all the time, uh, Denoise, Topaz Denoise, or Topaz A1, which is a nice um, addition to the Topaz um, program. And you wanna check for your white balance and keep that on auto. I usually have my white balance on auto for most of my photography. Uh, avoiding your burnt highlights or your crushed shadows and watching your histogram. And you can change your images as, as you want when you're doing the editing. This is before you're adding your texture, remember. This is just your image that you've taken and you want to do work on. You can change it to black and white. You can change your color. And we'll, oh, this is also with your editing. You're gonna, we're going to talk about the blending mode um, and some of the editing tools that you can do on your texture layer. So where to find textures, looking for textures wherever you have your camera. This is rice paper. And I think I colorized it. 
I had some rice oh. things. Oh. I think, yeah, actually, I didn't color rice. This, this is the color of my rice paper. Yeah. <clears throat> but like you said, I think you said that, Bobby. You know, you can take folded paper, you can take yeah. paper and, and draw on it, you know, crayon marks, and you can do whatever you, you know, want. You can Definitely. use newspaper print. So here are some of the ideas, old paintings on walls, a wood, which I have from a, a wood plank, a board from a path that I took pictures of, old storage sheds, gemstones, amethyst, jade, quartz, marble or granite. That's what I've used because we have a lot of those here. Brick, rust, trees, rocks, any organic surface, canvas, paper, painted or fabric with texture. You said yarn, right, Bobby? Look for yes. organic look for anything that has organic scratches marks or cracks in the surface um the windows uh, some of the um, authors that i read showed pictures of taking pictures of windows of course you want to get it real close so you don't have a re you want to reduce the reflection especially if you have some rain or mist on it you know maybe even oh, huh. yeah right so it can really produce some interesting effects your tabletop strapes um spider webs i've i've done work with spider webs and tree roots, combining them. Mm. Tree, I have a, I think I have a sample in here, tree bark and, and text. And that's just a small list. I mean, it's endless. Like he, this one of the guys said, he wrote, look for textures wherever you sit. I decided to add in wherever you have your camera because you could be standing, walking or whatever and you can be taking pictures of textures. I noticed in the park, I didn't have my, I had my iPhone with me. I took pictures of deer that I saw, but I, the leaves and the green look so pretty, but we were just, we're just walking for getting my, uh, our endurance ready for Alaska. So I didn't take my yeah. pictures. Don't, don't forget pebbles laying. Oh know, yeah. You, I, yeah. That's what I had the rocks and, the, and, and this is um, granite. I think that from one of my pieces in the living room, hmm. uh, there are for some free texture downloads. Here's um, one free images. And this one is raw pixel for free stock photos. These actually are, you see, rawpixel.com. And this one, freeimages.com. Oh, I use, um, I've done raw, a raw pixel and it, there's no fee and there's usually no licensing. I mean, there's often no licensing. So you could use it, what, what you get there and you can put it where, in. Where photo. do you find the free stock photos? Yeah, raw, rawpixel.com and freeimages.com. Sandy, could I make a little suggestion? Yeah. I'm sitting here with my phone and my bowl of food, and I'm taking pictures of your where you have things to write, so I don't have to write them down. So I, at the end, I put them all. I, I have, let's say, five photographs from what you're putting here, and then I just put them in. It will be textures by Sandy in an album. Okay. That's Saves right. me having to write notes. Well, I, I send out the um, picture. I send out my PDF file of the of my uh, presentation, although I've changed it about four times since then. <laughs> and but it, I did send out the links to all these, all the things that I. Um, there was a document with all the links that mm. um, I, I used for this uh, presentation, and you, these Excellent. are for free. But you have, in order to do raw pixel, you have to sign up, and but there's there's no fee for it. And you don't get a lot of garbage from them. You get a weekly update on of their of their weekly new pictures. Um, what I really want you wanted everybody to watch before the video, you know, before seeing this is because this these two videos that I have here, um, YouTube um, videos, were very easy to understand. And they would help you understand what I, I'm doing here. And there's more advanced techniques too, and I didn't touch on that because we're going to be doing creating textures in, in uh, Photoshop. We're going to be covering these two um, sites cover covers how to do the layers, um, masking. We haven't used masking, blending modes, and brush tools. And I have some screenshots of these things and the slides. Um, and processing programs. And I did look for some others. I thought Canva, you could do it. Canva is a free program and you could do it on the iPhone, iPad and in the computer. But I was trying to manipulate a photo, putting one, putting my image, and I have this photo later on. It's a, it's a scene at, um, when my grandson was, we were hiking. And I came to this guy and Mario's trying to get in. Mario trying to get in? 
I, yeah. All right, I'll get you in. I started the program. Are you, are you waiting? Yeah. Okay, I'm having a problem with my Zoom. I couldn't get in, and I tried to call Mark. He just called me back and said he's not running the meeting. So, um, all right, thanks a lot. Do you, you want to get in or not? You're, you're here? Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting here. Oh, 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 I... Didn't know you're here. Oh, uh, you know okay. what? When I'm running, I'm running the slides, and I can't do that. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm. I'll let you in now. All right. Thanks a lot. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. Okay, Mario's on his okay. way. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. No problem. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, I have to go back to share screen where I was. Okay, they wanted to, they all, everybody wants to get me confused. This is not easy for the 70, almost 75 year old. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Thank you for saying that. <laughs> it's true for all family. of us. Sorry, you know, yeah. Uh, anyway, these two videos are really community. helpful for understanding the things that I was saying, Mario. That, understanding what I was talking about today, creating textures in Photoshop, it covers layers, masking, blending modes, and brush tools, which I have slide um, uh, uh, slide pictures of, you know, screenshots of, and processing Adobe Photoshop and um, and Photoshop elements. GIMP, I haven't, I haven't tried getting into GIMP. I know it's a free program. And I don't know anything about Max or Pixelmator. These are some of the names that I got off one of these two videos here. And I did, Mario, I did send a, a PDF file. I'll give you a, send you an update so you can put it on if you want. And I did send a document with all the links uh, of the sites that I either read or watched with for this program. And this is just. I have no idea what it was. It was something I made, but it's green. Uh, I think I manipulated something to use. This was um, one of my, one of, these are one of my texture slides. Uh, image texture and, and manipulation. Here's the board that I, original board that I took a picture of on a trail. And then I did it, I changed it into black and white, I added some scratch lines. Now I'm not showing how I did this particular one, but I'm just giving you an idea of how you can create unique art. These with three images. This was a, just a simple tree. I did this one and once, I think something like this, I'm, I'm not sure I used this one, but the, the judge didn't like this area, which was too white. I would have to have changed that. But this mm. was the photo of a girl that I, uh, I superimposed a leaf photo. And I changed, I used one of the Photoshop, um, manipulations to get this effect of this board looking like a 3D, you know. <clears throat> wow. Right? Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, oh, yes. I did some blending, color blending, layering, and color manipulation. Okay, so I just did this slide today, so hopefully it's good. I wanted to show some more ways, so you how I actually did some of these things. So in Photoshop, I use, this is, I've already had the photograph. This was the photograph of me. Dan took this picture, I guess, but I, and um, obviously I didn't take it. For <laughs> <obvious reasons. laughs> but I, I selected, um, I wanted to show you on the, some of the screenshots. Um, I select camera raw filter because this Lightroom has this feature that I'm gonna go into. You could do a lot of these uh, masking in Lightroom. But then you can't do all the layers. So I found out that the new new Hammer Roar feature filter has this A1 uh, update. And it has all these um, multiple masks you can create. Um, you can edit each mask individually when I'm going to have pictures. Um, able to add or subtract from each mask. So if you mask something and you want to take it away or add to it, you can do that. And there's different types of masks. There's a linear gradient, I'll talk a little bit about in the next slide, and a radial gradient also in the next slide. So here I used, um, I gotta move this. Over here in this, when you go into camera raw filter, this opens up and right here, there's like a little circle. That's your mask. 
And then when that opens up the screen over here, and it can allow you to select the type of mask you want. Here I selected, you see everything is in pink around me. So once I selected and created a mask, I can then edit it with all the tools that are given to me over here. Like I can change the exposure, I can change highlights, and then you can go down and do sat color saturation. You can change to black and white. You know, you can add details, reduce noise. Um, here for the same photo, I added another plus mask over here is creating the mask. I added another mask and I selected the sky. So if I wanted to change the sky or add a texture to the sky, I could do that over here. Okay. And uh, also it, you can manipulate that. And then I can select myself and I can add or edit this particular photo. This is not anything right now. I have no masks on this. I'm just showing you what you would be doing with each if you want to do um, editing of a photo before you add your mask to it. Sandy, before, before you switch away, uh, Diana, you had asked the other day, you had forgotten where to find the histogram. You'll notice here it is at the top right of each of these uh, slides that Sandy is showing. You see yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. And all, this is, uh, I forgot to mention, here, see it's pink. This is a linear gradient. You see these two lines over here? where my arrow is? Yes. Uh, let me see. Uh, how do I get the pointer options? Okay, right here. See that? Huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so if I turn this around, I could make a linear gradient here, or I could, or, or I could have done it here, but then my feet would have been involved in that, or I could do it on a diagonal. It depends on the type of photo you have, and if you're doing a face, sometimes you'll even get face or skin or body you know, you'll have selections depending on the type of photo that you have. So how do you do select background? Uh, there's a select background in this little section here. When you add plus mask, it'll give you a selection uh, for select background here. You see, you see right here, it says background because they gave so me, it, they it, gave, it, it, it gave me um, a selection, uh, gave me a choice of what to select. And, and it automatically determines what the subject is and just selects everything Yeah, it else. depends on how busy the, 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 the photo is. You okay. know, it doesn't always do it as well, but this particular photo that I picked up, I said, you know, it really highlighted. But you see, even though they did the background, it also did the sky. Uh, so what they then go in. Is this tool camera, is this just the camera Photoshop. raw editor? Yeah, no, this is Photoshop. Photoshop um, camera okay. raw filter. Uh, what is, I would oh. go into filter. You see camera raw filter? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If this oh, isn't camera possible. raw. I'll, I, I just want to know if it's available in elements. Yeah. Uh, I will ask the same question. I, I can't if answer you don't that question. Have Photoshop. Well, so you flow? Uh, I don't have it. Well, you have elements. So, I have elements. Well, uh, I don't know how to transpose it. Where do I find? I don't know elements, but oh, it's no. camera raw. Well, uh, this is camera raw filter. You may have that there, but I don't know if the A1 feature is in uh, elements. All well, I mean, we, when we bring up a, a raw photo, the camera raw, uh, the camera raw editor comes up first before you go over to elements. And that's what I want to know if this was the camera raw. No, no, I don't. I no, edit it's not. This is within Photoshop. Photoshop. Right. It, when I, I had an earlier slide, that says gave me places where you could do the texture, you know, all this stuff with the textures. And it was Photoshop Elements and Photoshop GIMP. And there was a, um, another one there, but okay. it didn't say, um, what you say, the camera, cam what you say, the um, camera. Camera raw uh, editor. Uh, yeah, didn't say that. And like I said, here, you see the sky is selected with the background. So if I didn't want the sky in this, and I just wanted to edit this part, I would be able to go to mask, um, subtract, and I could select this section and subtract that from my selection. So that's why Photoshop has some advantages, a lot of advantages. Right, yeah. Bobby? Yes, most definitely. Yes, it does, but we're paying the price. Well, you know, you know, it compared, to, you know, compared to some of the apps, some of the apps I was looking at, they want like $12 a month, $13 a month. The, the, the Photoshop is a, a bargain. 
Um, it is absolutely. I, I don't regret that I subscribe. Not at all. I got to get my lazy. I have to get. I don't want to. How do I get? It's not letting me get out of here. I can't use my. Ah, oh, I could know what to do. I couldn't do this. Ah, I could use my uh, keyboard. Okay. Okay. Photoshop select hammer or filter, which is, again, this is another photo that I took from of my backyard. And I have, I made it. The first thing I did was create a second layer. This way I'm not going to do any, you know, I can always get rid of it and I still have my photo photo and you make a second layer by either cont hitting control plus J or say hitting layer you go here to layer duplicate layer from menu and then I have a second layer where I can do all my work on okay I talked about the different types of radio uh, uh, of um, selections this is what's called a, a radial gradient when you go into it it'll first make a circle and then you can spread it out and widen it and make it either you know bigger or smaller so that you're selecting a certain area to do your work and whenever you select a mask it opens up what you can do with that particular area okay remember this is not i'm just editing the basic photo right now not adding my masks yet um i selected the mask I selected radial gradient and you have, I mentioned lady, linear gradient, face, background, and subject, the sky and subject. And you have all your editing tools and it will only adjust inside that oval here, hmm. okay? I, I have this for purpose because I do have texture applied to this after. Because I, I wanted to show you how to get rid of a, a background that I didn't want and, stuff like that. I mentioned backgrounds. Um, uh, a radial gradient applies a local adjustment inside or outside an oval shape. Great for creating natural looking effects. Just the feathering, that's another part. I uh, Here, you see this feathering thing? It says feather. So when you're adjusting, it's not a hard edge. Right. Mm -hmm. And you could do also change the opacity. So there's a lot of tools here that you can use. Um, it, it defines the sharpness of the shape. And Andy, yeah. At the, at the very top of the screen, I can't read it. What does that say right at the top? There's a, a few. Yeah, right there. Stack Rocks. That's the name of the document. Oh, okay. that's the, my name of my document. Did you right. stack those rocks? No, this is a statue. It's a stat. It says, "Yeah, I stacked them. I'm very." Oh, talented. it's a sculpture. Oh, okay. That's one of my other talents. For, um, for, um, <laughs> Anna. I stack box when I go out. No, this is a statue. <laughs> okay. I have one in my back and one in my front yard. And also, you know, I said you can select background, but also you can select a mask and then you invert the mask, and then my background would be the one that's selected, and I would do the work on the background. So there's two ways to do it, um, Mario, for the background. You see what I did? I selected this and then I hit, um, there's a little spot that you, there's three little, three little dots up here and I would hit that, right click on that and it opens this up and I would invert my mask. And then I could edit the background. Okay. Um, okay, so again, we're doing adding layers. You see here, I have, I don't know what to do with this thing. Okay, adding layers. This is the background layer one, and then we're going to show you what I've been, what I've done with this photograph. Adding one layer at a time, and select the layer layer to highlight it. So whenever I'm working on a layer, I have to make sure this is not. When I took the photo, I didn't highlight this, so this would have been highlighted over here before I started doing work above it. And you modify each layer as required. You see, I have all these layers here. I'm going to show you next. Add rice paper. So here, I um, in an earlier photo, I don't know if you saw this, Mario. I had a picture of rice paper, which, which is purple and yellow and gold. So I added that over here, and then I did some masking because I wanted it. I didn't want the um, this rice paper to be over the rocks, so I had to erase it from the rocks. Anybody have a question? 
Okay. So you applied rice paper to the whole thing and then you use right. the, the layer paper. with see if you see this picture right here, the rice paper is the same size as the photo. I could have okay. made it smaller. I could have then taken this, I could have taken this rice paper and rotated it, turned it around to where I had the colors where I wanted it. I have already changed it into black and white. So I could have manipulated any way I want. Okay. And here I found that there were some areas that I didn't like the way they looked, right here. And right here, so I would have to do some more more work on it. The other part of this is the blend. I mentioned blending mode. Over here, this is normal. The the um, default setting is normal, and I'll have a picture of this particular section. And you can't see my hand. You, I have a. I'll have a picture of this uh, drop down a little later. But I selected the blending mode luminosity. That's what I liked. So I selected that and I have a 55% opacity over the texture over this. You can change it how you like it. Any questions? And then I masked to get rid of it over there. Oh, I can't do that. Okay. So you know, I played with blending modes and opacity. I selected luminosity at 55% and the layer mask on the texture. I paint in black to remove areas you don't want, such as over the rocks. Use a brush to change the opacity, size, and harm, uh, hardness. So I would have selected um, from here, the brush, brush tool on the left-hand side, right? And then I can adjust the size of the brush and then I would check, make sure that the uh, it's not a hard brush. It would have to be a softer brush. A soft edge brush, right. Soft edge brush, right. And if you wanna paint, you paint with white over your layer with a very soft edge brush, brush to bring back some texture on the subject. So say I wanted a little bit of texture somewhere, I would then go back in and paint over with white and then add back some of the texture, right, Bobby? Yes, Sandy, area. maybe maybe a little, um, just to tell people how, oh, about the black and white and how to yeah, use it. Yeah, you want it, you want it. The simplest it, I, thing I, in the world. Yeah. Um, you get, I, I, I you would say, add. do you want me to say or you say? Yes, you, you say it. Okay, if I were using a mask my way, the, uh, if you look down on the bottom right of the screen, very bottom right, right above where the date is. Yeah, right see here. FX, and then you see a square with a circle. That's the mask icon. When you click on that, it mm -hmm. brings the little, second little picture in white. This picture. That's yeah. exactly. If you paint and you're at the same time, your color picker will automatically turn black because when you paint with black, black reveals the layer below. It, right. it, it scrapes it away or it erases it out. If you if you don't like it, if you switch to white, white. by pressing the letter X on the keyboard, it'll paint back the way it was in the first place. A mask is a wonderful way to erase something. Uh, it's very flexible. You can leave it as it is or paint it back the way it was. So Bobby, uh, you're saying if you create a layer, doesn't matter what the layer is, and you go down to this right circle in the I, square I, I, right I here. Really is, see it. Yeah, and look, look at my look at my red. Yeah, um, I see where it is. I just can't read it. It's too tiny for me. Um, it's a, but it's, it's a square it says FX. with a circle. Yeah, no, it's next to the FX. It's the third one from the left. By the one, way, that's only a three. shortcut. You could get it using the controls also, but yeah. And then it this creates just, a mask and white means it's covering everything and black reveals. That's right. right. The white okay. hides everything. And when you paint with the black paint, it, it, it reveals what is on the layer below. So yeah, whatever you and, done and Mario, that, listen, you yeah, don't sorry. have to remember it. You just yeah. have to try it. If you paint right, it exactly. and you don't get the results you like, change just it. press the X key. It'll change it to white. No, and black. It took but me you're... a long time to remember what black did, yeah. but it's easy. You just go back and forth between the black and white and paint in or paint out whatever is on the layer below the, the layer you're working on. I have some masks that are actually black. This thing turns black. And when I created the mask, when I 
hit this little square with a circle, I also hit um, the alt key. And instead of it being white here, it was black. I'll oh, yes, you. that's yeah. right. That's true. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll show you that. But all these other screens I'll show you in a minute. This is some of the adjustments that I made over this mask. Okay, so I've made the mask. And now I want to add, I want to fix some of the areas that I didn't like. Why can I say one last thing? It occurs to me that we might have a lot of fun when you're back from your vacation. A, a few of us, four, five, three, whatever, meet in the uh, in our room, and one of you bring a laptop. Unfortunately, I no longer have one. I, I have one, and I was thinking that it would be nice to have a monitor to correct to connect to it, so that I, we can um, show it on a monitor. Well, that's true, but you know what? We don't have it, so let's work with what we do have. Unless somebody has a monitor to load. To load. Well, you know, when we make it too complicated, yeah. it, uh, so keep it simple. And we sit there and we just demonstrate. You yeah. paint with okay. black, yeah. this is what happens. You paint it back with white and so on and so forth. Seeing right. is believing. And, and right. you see how easy it is. Now, here's where I got this information from. Again, it's in something that I, you see this over here? Yes. Okay. Okay, so here I wanted to work on different areas over here, adjust the blending mode and opacity here. I, I, I selected hard light and 93% opacity. I added a part of uh, the screen on the left here. If you see the first rectangle, you see where I am? I, had, I added a little bit here. And I, I, then I had a mask over this area right here to, to get rid of some of the, um, the, some of the mask. And I had to use, I wanna make sure I use a feathered brush so it doesn't produce a hard edge. When you mm -hmm. add pieces like this, it can produce a hard edge. So you wanna feather over that. To, and so when you erase it, you use a feather and then you erase over it. So it softens it and it makes the whole picture look homo hom homogenous. Right. Okay. Sandy, do people know how to get a hard edge or a soft edge brush? Well, it, yeah, it, it was. I think I may have a picture later on that shows it. It's up in here somewhere. It's not the brush. It's this is the um, feathering um, in the mask. I, I, I I'll oh, yes. I okay. have another. Right. Okay. Okay. And here, I, like you see here, I had the piece on the left. I think I have a mask, but I didn't think I did anything here. But I have the mask over here, and then I did. A, I did this. I used. It says Silver Effects Pro. But I see I did this slide, I did this particular slide way before I knew I was doing this lecture. So I think I at some point I, I changed everything to silver using silver effects pro to black and white when I added the extra uh, mask because it wasn't in black and white. You understand? Yes. Okay. Silver effects pro is an add-in, and I changed my colored pictures to a black and white. Um, here, where we're talking about creating a smooth edge uh, with filter, uh, here I did this, I used a Gaussian blur to smooth my edges even more, okay? So I went to filter up here and I selected um, filter um, bl blur and then Gaussian blur. And then you can move the slider back and forth to blur your image to get um, a more interesting look and then you hit apply. See where you had a little arrow here? Yeah. Okay. And here's the filter where I went into the filter up here. You see it on the screen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So you can create again, taking the same photo, doing different, and this is not the best edit either because I see I have soft edges here. I could have done more work, but again, you know, I would have had to spend a couple more hours doing that. I didn't have that much time. So I know it's not perfect. Like I said, I'm certainly not an expert, but I play with it and here's it more in color. Okay, so this, and I got rid of, if you remember the original photo, it was a brick background. It was my backyard and somebody's property on the other side. So this okay. is just a little bit different look. So I added more than one texture. I changed the blending mode. I changed the, I can change color to black and white. You can change your opacity. You can do a lot of different things to alter whatever it is here. And you could add more textures. It doesn't right. have to be just two textures. 
And isn't that part of the fun? Oh, what else could I do? Oh, right, I could, right. This. But you can go crazy, you know, after a while, you, you know, how much yes. fun you want. Right. Um, so here's somebody else's work, not mine. Um, digitalphotographyschool.com. Here he used soft light. Okay. And I have to do this. Okay. So he used darken. This is one of the modes to darken. He has a diff, what's called difference. So if you have more than one layer, it takes the difference between the top layer and the bottom layer. This is multiply and this is saturation. So there's a lot of different ways that you can change your image by just changing your, um, your blending mode. And this one, um, adding the changing your opacity, again, you see how the difference is from zero to 100% opacity, how you can change your image. So you have a lot of different options. Hmm. Mario, I started this whole thing by saying the purists may not do this. They go to look for, get texture in their photos by taking the photo, but that's not always possible. That you may not have, you may have a distracting background. You may have a cloudy overhead day, you know, cloudy yeah. day. You take, you go on a, a bus trip and you're getting off at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And they say, here, you have 15 minutes to take photographs. So, yes. <laughs> Which is so uh, what you do, Sandy, is you make silk purses out of sow's ears, correct? Okay, sounds good. So here's a picture I took. In, in, here's Stonebridge. So, okay. Here is me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. Wait. Oh, but I have to go back. Uh, I have to go back. Sorry. I thought I was, I had more work on there. Current sludge. No, I, <laughs> I want to be here. Current sludge. So, okay. Okay. So, here I didn't obviously take this picture. This was taken at a Halloween party several years ago indoors. I cut it out and superimposed it. And there's a lot of work in here. I have uh, I have me upside down, and I have a shadow over here. Uh, I added. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Sky, uh, I don't actually, I tried to look for the, the original PSD file and I couldn't find it, but I know uh, I did something to my sky. And these are all uh, brushes, brush strokes. So let's look at what I have here. Okay, this, I call this altered state. Okay. And so my image here, let me get my um, pointer option, slaves of pointer, okay. Uh, I have another image of the sky overhead. I'm not sure which sky it was. Uh, I'm, here's my, I have a shadow of my feet. Like I said, I du duplicated the photo and then I turned it upside down and I copied it and put it in here for my shadow. Uh, I added a clipping mask and color burn. Uh, you see this little arrow here? That means a clipping mask. That means I applied whatever I did only to this area. You see this little screen here? This you ever use clipping mask, Bobby? Yes. Yes. So it only it okay. controls only the layer below. Layer, right. And only so it it's attached to this layer picture. only to, to make editing. Um uh, here's the cutout of me from um I think I did this I must have done this I said it from Procreate, which is another uh, program. I may have done the cop the um Cop, cut me out and, and procreate. I, I don't know. I, I thought I did, so I added that there. And then I added all these brush strokes up in here. You can choose so many different types of brushes, and depending on what you choose is the effect and, and like a golden right. effect. Okay. And here, so here was the layers. Oh. I started six, it's backwards. Okay. I understand. So, okay. Uh, right. Five is the important. And I have to, I'm taking pictures of everything, so I'll give you a set. Yeah. You know, I don't need a right. picture. Oh, you you're, right. oh, you're, she's talking to somebody. Okay. Shadow of my image upside All down. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, number three is a clipping mask and uh, cut out of me, and the top layer is br brushed on splatter with gold tone. Sandy, I'm sorry. Could you just go back to that last slide? I wasn't able to get my my picture. Is it possible to go back? If Hold not, on. yeah, I have to do this. I have to do. All this. right, there we go. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, let me get in here. What? Let me just. Oh, 
Let me get everything up. Okay, wonderful. Give me one second. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to give send you another copy of the PDF file, so you don't have to do that. Okay, uh, it's all right. I, I like to have okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, layers of texture to create different effects. Here's a simple bird in the sky. I added, and this is just a sample. Uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, that's very annoying. Hmm. <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. See, so I have, you know, I think I used the rug as the textured layer for this one. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I changed um, uh, different things. You change the color brightness. I changed, oh, let me get my, 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 um, you know, you can't read it. I can't read it either if I were you. So, but it, there's no way to get those things up fat, bigger. Uh, brightness over here. Then I did a curves layer and I added the layer to is the texture. And then I did new saturation over it to, to make different colors. Hmm. Okay. Yes. So I'm just, it's a simple thing, but you can do that with any type of photo that you like. Enhancing sky and texture in the foreground. This is a, a example of taking a photo with a really crappy sky. And uh, you, hmm. you see my grandson? <laughs> 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 he wanted to get to, we had, there were two trails. We took the river trail and then there was a top trail, we, which we had done before, but we thought we'd go here. And then he decided he wanted to go to the top and by himself. And we said, by yourself, if you don't, if something happens to you, your mother, it's not, he's only 26 years old, but grandparents are still <laughs> worried. If something happens to you, we're going to go home and tell your mother, we lost your son. So, <laughs> so thank goodness he was okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I changed this, I added some sky and I added some more texture uh, um, on the, you know, in the photo to make the photo a lot more interesting, I think. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Big difference. Big okay. Okay. This person, I'm going to go in here quickly, one directions. Ah, okay, I wanted to go out. Hold on, I wanted to do ah. escape. Okay, I wanted to be able to get it. Uh, open link. Okay, here is what I, you know, I, I wanted to copy some of the photos, but uh, and there's a, um, there was, when I went to do a copy of the photo, they, a little thing popped up that it was copyrighted. But this is a very good article um, showing a picture that she took and then the texture she used and basically showing you all the steps to do this, okay? Yes. And then here's your um, blending modes here, right? I showed you that. And here's the, she still had, she said, I couldn't stop here. I wanted more grunge. So she added some more, she did some, she changed the color burn and changed the opacity of the texture because she thought it was a little too dark. Okay. And here's her final product. What do you think? Which one is the final? This you one. Got it, you, got it, you got to highlight it. Uh, we don't see it. You don't, you don't see I anything? Just, on the I just see the page that says texture tutorial, Karen Waters art. Yes. Oh, you can't see all this? No. No. I'm in the no, slide. you know what? No. We we see this on the left, we see the second one. Texture tutorial, yeah. Karen Waters. Oh, we oh, don't oh, see this. Maybe you can't see what I'm seeing on my you screen. You can't see slide 26 or 27. No. Right. No, I'm not maybe in my slides. I'm not oh, in okay. my slides. Oh, maybe that's why. I clicked on the I see this, but you can't see this. So forget I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. What I did was I I I thought you could see it by um, 
Click on 26. I, I know I'm in the slide. You don't see anything here, right? Because I've clicked on this and I thought I saw the, the present, this person's, I saw this on the web and oh. you can't see it, but you have to go in here to see it. I can, I couldn't copy her photos because okay. she said it was, they were copyright, copy, they were, you know, copyrighted. Okay. So yes, I, I understand. Oh, so I can't, I can't, but I, I'm showing you what she, sort of what you did be, uh, in here. Here it so, is. Here it is. Now that's my slide. Oh. This is not what, I, no, this is not what I wanted you to, uh, where's my, my, um, I'm trying to get my little, uh, that's weird. I can't get my uh, point. Of, oh, I know why. Sorry. That's why. Ah, okay, so pointer options, laser. Okay, this is a picture I took, an old mine in Colorado, converted it to black and white with layers of curves and level adjustments. So this is the photograph edited, right? Well, you, you didn't take this in Stonebridge, no? <laughs> <laughs> and this one is two textures layers Change with uh, layers, masks with like two texture layers overlying it with masks um, over the black and white image. So you can see the difference in the sky. And I'll show you how I what it. This was a little, I did the picture because I just popped, I was looking for a photo to do that texture thing that she did. And this is already highly textured. So it's a little hard to. Um, really visualize the big difference, but I, I did like the way the sky looked. Um, so, okay, I use for my two textures, I did my, these two. And this is um, dripping marble. I don't think this was mine. I think I got this as a freebie. This was mine. And I pretty much used this part of the image for some of the texture. Oh, I see. Okay, so what I first did was here, I did made the first layer a lighter color. You see where it says there, the blending mode says lighter color. Mm -hmm. I dripping marble texture was my first layer. I use light and lighter color, not light in color. Opacity of 54%, which is up here. You see where I have my little red yes. thing? Yes. And the I needed some masking over here because if you see here, you see this the marble dripping down here. I didn't want that in the in the trees. And there was some, it, it changed the light, you know, changed stuff in here. So this highlighted area is where I'm going to want to do my masking. Got Sandy, it? can I, can I interrupt you just to ask, I'm trying to get, understand how you do this. So what did you first do? Did you create a duplicate layer? You've got your background, then you created a duplicate layer. And then I had my picture of the duplicate layer. Then I added, I added a layer mask. All right. I added, I added what I did. Let me tell you what I did. I you opened got the up background. Another, I uh, I opened up another. There's several ways to do it. I opened up about another image with my background. I I copy and copy it. You know, when you have a layer in um, Photoshop, you have to do Control J to duplicate the layer and then copy it. You can't copy okay. the base layer. I, I apologize. I'm trying to translate do, this into, into like what we have in Elements. So you do I, layers? Got, I, I have it up on my, I'm, I'm trying to play around with it. Like I have it there to see if I can find the commands. Um, so I've got a background layer. And if I go up to layers, I can say duplicate layer. Yeah. Right. Or I could say new layer from background and it creates right. a separate layer. Yes. Yes. Now I, I go and I, up, and what you're doing is you take some kind of a filter no. and you apply it to the whole picture. No, no, I take another image. The in image case, is, in this, it's another image. I copy that image from one, you know, I have two tabs open on the top in Photoshop. Like okay. I have here, you see here, it says drippy marble yes. up here. And this gotcha. is old line. So I would have been, gotcha. in, I would have done this and I would have done, copy that layer, and then I go in here and paste that layer in. So I have the original layer, I have the original layer, and then I have the marble layer on top of it. Okay, so let, I hope you don't mind, but Ed, so let's say you were taking a sky, yeah, a, a picture with a great sky in the background, and you copy that into your um, uh, 
your duplicate layer, right? And yeah. then you then you create a mask, which I'm going to ask Bobby and you, how do you do it? But then you create a mask, and you can, in this case, like you would erase everything on that duplicate layer, like all the mountains and the trees, right? So that they would show, and only the sky would appear on the top, right? Or you could take the photo of the sky, bring it, yeah. just reduce it in size, so it is, so you don't have to do it over the whole image. Just do okay. it over the part. Like I would say here. I'm trying I want, to get, yeah. I'm trying say to get I wanted to do the sky here, only the sky here, right? Yeah. If I only wanted yeah. this mask over here, I would have either short, made the mask image smaller or raised it up or turned it around, depending on where I wanted it. And Bobby, okay. when you were talking about masks, which we did from over here, when I make the masks, I'm doing them in raw in 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 camera raw, and I, there's a spot there to do the right where I showed you before. Remember the little circle I showed you on the top before, yeah, Bobby? Yes, yes. And I'm not adding my mask down here. I'm not. Oh, that's adding. interesting. Okay. Yeah, because right because I'm working. You know, Sandy. One of the things about Photoshop is like any, there are many ways to skin the cat. You but this way, this yeah, thing. but why it's good here, way. Bobby, is because it automatically opens the adjustment layers. And then you can also add or subtract and add more layers all in that same screen. Yeah, that's that. Yes, I don't always work as efficiently as you do. Well, uh, I don't try. You have to try yeah. the, no, but try the camera raw filter. I, think, I mean, the camera raw filter imaging and uh, masking and see if you like it better. It, I will. More complicated masking. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So, so you, 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 I, I just want to get the technique. Yeah. Not necessarily what here. So, but, but that's basically the technique. But I, I'm at a point now. I got this up here. I created a duplicate layer, a background copy. It's called, mm -hmm. and I applied something dramatic to it. I like. Uh, can you guys see that? No. Can you no. see it? Yes, no. no. I mean, you can see no. it, but I can't make sense of it. No. Oh, well, I mean, it's like I created this. So if I get rid of this, that's the original picture. And then and I put it, I did that. So right, now, but now you can play with your, if you can play with your so uh, your opacity it, and your blending mode. So you see well, where. Okay, or I can, or I can apply a mask and just, and just. Erase. Uh, erase the parts that I don't want to be affected. Right, but you I still may want to change. You may want to change the opacity even on the areas that you wanted it. You may want it darker, lighter, and you may want it if there's a blending mode that you can use to, to change. The, here's the blending modes. We have all these different choices. All right. So here's the opacity slider, right? I can change. Right, right, the, right. All right. You guys, that's great. You can see that. Yeah. Now, but here I've got this. How do I create the mask? Ah, damn it. Here, here I see... I have that FX button down here. Can you see where I'm looking? But yeah, but it's yeah, not. No, it's next it. door to the FX button. It says layers. No, when I click it though, it doesn't really do. No, then it's not mask. You have to you have to get it. Look for a little button that says mask. You you gonna well, look for the circle in the square if they have it in Elements. I'm not sure. They see, have yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to. It says actions, adjustments, color swatches, favorites, histogram, info navigator. It doesn't look doesn't look like I have the ability to do that. Or when I do the drag down, the best I see up here that it tells me it says create clipping mask. Oh, that's it. Yeah, maybe. Oh, it's clipping mask is different. No, that's no, that. that's remember the one I that goes you the, right. Yeah. So I don't I don't see any way that I can create a mask. I think. If I go to no, layers, I suggest again yeah. that we. Oh wait, layer mask. This it? Yes. To add and a layer mask, collect the part of the image you want to show and click the add layer mask in the layers pattern, pa right. panel. So this says a reveal or hide all. Yeah. This, the, if you look it up. All right, I, I got it. Okay. That's it, right? Yeah. Uh, I, that I, white I, box. I can't now see. Now I would go over to the erase tool over here. No. Well, okay. Would you, Sandy? Would you? Yeah, I guess maybe. You, I, 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 you know what? It's it's too hard for me to go by this 
right now. I and mean, I think we'd have to sit and look at it different and, you know, in real time. And I, and I apologize. I'm just trying to figure out how to translate all your hard work into something that can, you know, I know, but yeah. Yeah, but, it works. Look. Yeah. Okay. Right. No, we can't so, see what you're doing, Mario. So. Oh, you can't. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm erasing the blown out areas so that it looks like what's underneath. And, and that seems to work. Okay, great. I, I'm sorry, that, that okay. was very helpful. Okay, well, here we are back in the next picture and I have leaves and mulch layer added as um, uh, to the bottom, to over, over my uh, marble image. Here's over here, I have a, and if you look, you see, if you can see this little screen here, I only added the um, leaves and mulch below this red line, approximately, okay? Yes. All right. Uh, and then I applied a mask to soft because it it actually would leave a hard edge. So I needed to, I can't still see the feather thing here, but I know there's one screen that shows it. Um, I mask applied to soften some of the layers from the top section to avoid a hard edge using a brush with feathering, but not from here. The brush, the feathering happened somewhere in here. And I, I, I hope that there's a picture. I think it's pretty pretty much originally Cindy. wait a second originally you see all these little other layers here my original yes. picture what i showed you had these layers that was what i used to um uh for that first picture but i just un, you know unhighlighted it and just did this other thing and this mask here you see the first the marble mask i yes i had the white background and the black on it that's where all the, I erased the marble because there was too much marble in here, too much marble in here. Um, all, all these little black spots in here were erased from the image. And then in this one, I used a black background with white. Then it does the same thing, Bobby. With the black background and I'm using the white, it reveals what's underneath, right? Yes, sure. So it's basically exactly. the same thing. Yes. Right. So I did that also here because i didn't want too much of that um mulch and leaves so it, it this there were some areas here that i worked on um afterwards because this had lost some darkness this had lost some darkness let me see oh i used the blending mode of overlay here for, for this for this layer because that's what i i went through a bunch of different ones and i said this is the one i like best and 70 percent. it's all subjective there's not one that's better than another. And some of the authors say they the ones that they use more frequently, you just have to play with the different blending modes and there's enough of them for you to choose. Um, when I did, I think the slide should have gone before the other one, but anyway, this is for the marble, I used a light and not, originally I had it listed as lighter color, lighter color, I changed it to light and my opacity was 71%. And I used the white mask brushing over the areas where I wanted to erase. Okay, that's all in this area here that I did some erasing. The red is not part of the picture, obviously. Sandy, do you do you sort of play with the blending modes? That's what yes, I do. That's what I'm I said. Sure. I chose yeah. I chose Lighten after I went through different ones. Yeah, you try it and it's yeah. like you're in some of them made them really dark. On. Some of them made them dark. I like this. I like the way the sky looked over it. It was just it made it, what I thought to me was more interesting. Okay, so again, this is the original slide from before my old mind with the original, not that there's not much difference in this, really. But if you see, look at the photo, there's not that much difference in the bottom. I like the sky. Perhaps if I had chosen uh, less of a textured image to play with, you would have seen more of a difference. You agree? Yes. Okay. And this, even the mountain looks a little better. I mean, just a tad on my screen anyway. Uh, texture photos combined in Photoshop create a new photo, whereas in my example made an, oh, here I have made an ad for clothing design, which I incorporated with these two photos as my texture. And actually I thought I put this towards the end. Oh no, I'm almost at the end of my slides, I think. Oh. Yeah, because I just did the other ones before, anyway. If you see the background here, and then I added, you see these clothing on these people? 
Yeah. Is she her yes. These yes. are the combination of these two. I've created huh. clothing from that, those images. That's terrific. Right. So you can do a lot of different stuff besides just making photos. Um, Rust and an old school bus plus guitar photos. Oh, I know where that Rust came from. <laughs> right. And I have these on different images, samples of textures. This is a similar one, beach chair, a phone case, a post, a print. And this is my um, cobweb and roots picture. Here's the cobwebs in the background was roots and I manipulated that. Hmm. And here is the huh. wooden crack photo on my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, very. <laughs> Sandy, she makes it work. <laughs> okay. Nothing uh, goes to waste. <laughs> uh, well, start creating photos with added texture. So this is another picture I took somewhere. I, one of the, uh, I think when we went, when we went to the, um, where I got all the, uh, the ticks from, we got ticks. Oh. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got tick. Lucky me, I had a broken foot. I didn't get to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to stop sharing. Right? How do I do this? Stop, stop share. Ah, ta da. Okay. <laughs> well, you took us on quite a trip there. <laughs> yeah, well, I could send you a copy of the change, the PDF file, because I, like I said, I, I, changed it so many times between the time I send it out, you know, just making little fine tuning edits and making those, um, creating the, you know, the um, animation is um, also time consuming. You, yes, you, know, sure. you have to yes. select different sections at a time and then sometimes yes. the selection did, yeah. When so. do you think we might get to see the video? So we could. Oh, I, I, oh, I guess I should stop the video, right? Yeah. I don't know how, are you sure you want to stop? 